So my name is Matt Sperling. I started at CalT in 2002, so I've been here about 18 years now. And um, this minivan project was actually, the Sienna project was something that was a really fun challenge for us because um, we never really get the opportunity to make a cool minivan or we, we don't very often. And it seemed like Toyota was really anxious for us to do something really cool and really dynamic. So with every new project we do, we start with a loose sketch and there's, there's again, no right or wrong answers here. It's just a loose sketch just to get an idea going. So um, with that, I'd like to maybe ask you start the video and I'll walk all of you through this. Um, okay, so when I start a sketch, typically we'll start laying out the perspective um, just to kind of show that this isn't a side view, this is a front three quarter perspective. And you can, you can start doing that by just maybe laying out a box in space. Um, I, I tend to try and keep the front corner of that box maybe about uh, one third to two thirds, the body side being the, the two thirds. And from there, you can start maybe indicating some ellipses. This, this is where your wheels are. And the reason I usually start with the wheels or the perspective is because the stance is uh, on, on car design is one of the most important things. And from there, you can kind of start establishing a ground line and uh, a little bit of a rocker in the chin. I, I tend to like to work from the bottom up um, and maybe just a little bit of a hint of a corner just to kind of get it, you know, started get an idea of what we're doing here. So at this point, I usually don't know what it's gonna look like, um, but to help me figure that out, I'll start indicating a, uh, a profile. So I'm just kind of hinting a little bit of the, uh, the eyebrow right now where the headlights would go. A little bit of the hood and keep the brush strokes really light and sort of free and energetic. Um, it's it's supposed to be messy. It's not supposed to be clean at all. So just kind of keep everything very loose. Uh, now the profile starting to kind of come into play. I, I kind of know what I'm looking at now. I have an idea of what I want this to look like. So you can start hinting maybe some character lines. And like Kevin mentioned, the shoulder on this vehicle was one of the one of the coolest things we could do is have a big shoulder and a minivan. So I started sketching that in a little bit. Um, and just starting to fill out all the negative space now. So hinting at where the rocker is, what the rear fender looks like, and going back in again to, to the cabin, showing the A pillar, the rail line area, and a little bit of where the cowl is. So again, when, when we do these sketches, we really try and kind of work from maybe the ground up, establish the profile, and start filling in all the, uh, all the details inside. And now we're kind of getting into the headlight a little bit. And so the headlight can have a little bit of a gesture to it. Um, and the lower intake now, just kind of establishing some kind of grill design in the lower intake area. Um, it, it's going a little fast, but it, you know, just kind of trying to explain to you guys how we sort of set these things up. Um, now a little bit more of the grill and headlight combinations. Again, everything's very light and everything is kind of uh, loose, loose and gestural. Um, now that we kind of have everything sort of lightly sketched in and established, we can you go ahead and uh, continue the video. We can start indicating some shadows and um, indicating a little bit of shading. So just pretend that there's a light source coming down from the top anywhere you want to indicate a surface is tucking underneath, you give it just a little bit of shading. And I, I like to add a little detail in the wheels too, just to kind of show that it's not just a saucer pan there. There's some, there's some actual design in there. And um, so now just indicating a little bit more shadow through the wheel. Same with the, the rear wheel too. So as we just kind of, this is all just kind of detail stuff. So as I kind of develop the sketch a bit more, I just like to add more detail just to kind of establish the perspective and, um, you know, little things like that. 
So now at this point, I, I like to go over everything with a darker pencil. So, um, or even the same pencil is fine, but just enough to establish a shadow line and start defining all the character lines that, um, that I want to make the sketch a little bit, a little bit punchier and a little bit stronger. Um, so for example, the front corner is a pretty uh, critical area. The ground is a pretty critical area. And from here, we can even start indicating a, a shadow. Um, just again, pretending that that light source is coming down from the, from the sky and casting a shadow on the ground. This also kind of helps plant the vehicle. So if you were to do a sports car, that shadow be, would be really thin. If you were to do a truck, and the truck is really high lifted, the shadow would be much, much taller. Um, this is kind of a sporty minivan, so it's sort of in between. And again, going over the profile just one more time in the grill area, we really want the profile to read really strong. And just for this minivan, which is, uh, like Kevin said, kind of based um, off the bullet train, having a really sleek profile is pretty cool. And it's something we don't often get a chance to, to do. So just really play that up. Hey, Matt, one, going, uh, one question was, if you mess sure. up, um, the pencils and come with an eraser, so do you start over when you mess up or how do you? No, no, there's, there's no messing up. Just okay. you, that's why I like to keep everything kind of light at first. And even if it's dark, it doesn't matter. It's, okay. um, <laughs> Even for us, it's not like, um, I can't even remember the last time I erased anything. It's just, you just keep everything loose and keep it messy. And eventually something will come out from that. Okay, got it. So it's on if, if, so the, the goal is don't erase and keep going. That's the idea. Oh no, the messy part's the best part. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. I mean, you know, the, I, I would add that the level that Matt's working at here, the, these sketches are for the designer. They're for the designer to work out ideas, um, things that they're thinking about that they want to try. Um, we often, I'm not saying never, but we usually don't look at or evaluate a sketch at this level. Um, this, is, this is a tool for the designer. So from this sketch, what Matt might do is he might develop it into a higher level rendering uh, sketch like the ones that I showed you um, that he did for the project. So. Um, so that's why he's saying, well, you know, erasing really isn't part of the program because you're, you, you just plow through and you, you're, you're searching and you're trying to discover um, something new. Yeah, exactly. So if you guys remember in high school when you had to do that math problem and show your work, this is the showing your work part. <laughs> the final answer would be the final rendering. Um, since we're at a pause, I see Gary, you had your hand raised. I don't know if you had a question. Um, at what point do you go from pencil to a digital pad of some sort? So it depends on the stage of the program, but um, for for me, like Kevin said, it, the, the pencil stuff is usually for working out ideas early on. And once you, once you do a number of these, you, you kind of get an idea of what you're looking for and then you can go on to the next phase where you're doing, you know, higher level um, renderings, digital or, or, uh, or hand renderings. I mean, I would, I would say that Matt's using, um, you know, paper and pencil here, but a lot of our new designers that come in out of school, they're, they're completely tablet. Um, they're, they're all digital. So they're, they can create a sketch that looks looks just like this. Looks like it was created by analog with paper and pencil, but it's all done digitally. Um, so it, it really just depends on um, what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, Matt probably you know you were you were like like myself were were educated on 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 paper and vellum and pencil for the most part, and then you know digital was something a learned a learned experience later on. Um, as a new tool uh, that we could use. So um, every designer is a little bit different. It, it really depends on, on um, you know, maybe how they were brought up and, and what's comfortable to them. Yeah, yeah, and like Kevin said, it's a generational thing too. Most of the, the guys that come out of school, they're, they're, I think they're born with a Wacom pen and pencil now at this point. <laughs> 
I don't even think. <laughs> I, it was it was hard pressed finding a pencil sharpener. <laughs> um. So I have a question. So when you start when you sit down and start the drawing, do you have an idea in mind, or do you just literally freehand? Ah, uh, Timmy, that's a good question. It really depends. Usually, we'll have a scope of an idea of the project, and um, I would say for me personally, about ninety percent of the time, I don't know what's going to come out. Um, I kind of did in this case because obviously we we did this design earlier and so I'm, I'm kind of revisiting the design uh, we had worked on a while ago but um, that's where things can be fun or frustrating because you just don't know <laughs> and you're kind of you're kind of learning as you go um, but as you can see here just establishing more shading and and just you know fleshing out the sketch a bit more it's still pretty it's still pretty gritty and dirty, but um, tells the story, you know. I mean, you know, in essence, it's a way to communicate an idea. And, yeah. you know, I guess when you start, every every designer is inspired by different things. Um, that, that's a that's a that's strictly a personal matter. And, you know, you, you bring those inspirations into the work that you're doing. And, and our first step is to work in 2D just simply because it's an efficient way to work. It's an efficient way to get ideas out quickly that we can then evaluate and um, start understanding, um, you know, the criteria uh, better um, that we set forth and, and how, how this, you know, the, the direction of the project is going to go. Um, so it's really, you know, again, strictly, it's, it's really a personal matter as, as to the type of ideas that each designer um, generates. And, and part of the reason we hire a lot of designers is that um, everybody brings their own life experiences with them uh, when, they, when, they, when they join us. It's not um, just what we can teach them once they join or what they learned in college, but, but every, everybody has their own artistic um, uh, preferences for things that they like and things that they don't like. And, and the idea is to get a lot of variety um, uh, from this process, from different backgrounds of people and, and different tastes. And, and we can evaluate a lot of different, um, uh, different directions and, and, and eventually work to coalesce that into one uh, beautiful, amazing design eventually. So if you don't ever throw away this is TF, if you don't ever throw away your test drawings, is there somewhere they're stored? Like you can see like the very first drawings of the CNF, like where y'all were first sitting down with it or do you scrap it or you just hold it until like the next generation comes around? Um, we, we keep all of our renderings. We, 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 have, a, we have a pretty good, pretty big archive of, of renderings that sketches and everything so we we hang on to everything yeah so i think we're we're done with the the sketch portion um if i could just add to to that point um our, our like kevin said our job is as designers to really push things and if we if we on our side do not push uh the end product does suffer because we know there's always going to be some pullback at some point in the design the manufacturing and engineering process. So um, that's why all of our sketches look super, super high energetic. The wheels look really big. The stance looks really strong. Um, that's to get us excited so we can move on to the next phase, then the next phase, then the next phase. So it's uh, it's really critical for us to make a really fun, exciting sketch, just like the ones you guys did now. So 